Here at Charles Lohr Industries, we strive for new and more useless ways to spend your time each and every day. Today, I'm going to show you how I'm going to run Linux on this AVR on a microscope slide. Sort of, kind of, not really. Remember kids, never let good engineering go to good causes. Anyway, over here in my browser, I'm going to go open up uh, JS Linux here, which is actually running on the AVR there. You can see it reading it off the SD card. Uh, because it's reading off the SD card and it's an AVR, it's going kind of slow, around 200 kilobytes a second. Uh, so let me just explain a little bit about what's going on here. Fabrice Bellard wrote a uh, JavaScript x86 emulator about two years ago now, and uh, it's pretty sweet. It runs an x86, and on top of that he runs Linux inside JavaScript in a browser. But here we're doing something a little bit more interesting. In addition to being a web server, the AVR also now supports a uh, certain kind of dynamic requests. So I can say uh, read or write from ports. So in this case, I can say uh, I want to read from port number 29 hex. If I do that, I can, and you can see it reads like A4. I could read another port, let's say 28, and you can see that it reads the uh, corresponding value for that. Over here, Linux has finally finished downloading itself off of the, uh, the AVR's SD card and it's booted. So now the AVR is just kind of chilling there and not really doing much anything, while in my browser the uh, the system is uh, churning away. I've used my own rootfs here and I have another file called hello2.c. So let's take a look at that. And uh, in here we, uh, we include avr.io which is basically just another copy of the AVR's IO ports. We have to configure it to use uh, general purpose I.O. and this is actually just calling I.O.P.L. because I've remapped inside the JavaScript environment several ports from uh, regular I.O. ports on the x86 to the physical ports on the AVR. In fact, I've mapped all first hundred, and, well, I guess it's 256 of them. And so once we do that, we can now directly write to the uh, registers, which are inside the browser, inside the AVR, or something confusing like that. And uh, I can configure the port D to be output, so we can light up this little LED right here. And I can configure the ADC to read temperature continuously. And then I can just cycle through a bunch of different colors on the output port and uh, go read in the ADC value. So I should be able to get the temperature in some sort of completely arbitrary units. Let's uh, compile this now with another one of Fabrice Bellard's Ridiculous Creations TCC. And it's done. So now, whenever I write or read to I.O. ports that are in the appropriate location, I can write and read uh, the actual values off the AVR. So you can see it's uh, blinking quite ferociously because it's cycling through a bunch of the different uh, values on uh, output port B. And as you can see, it's also moving pretty quickly. So these are actually all individual AJAX requests that are being mapped from uh, hardware like I.O. requests and uh, being sent to the AVR. And so this is how I'm running Linux, or at least an example program on Linux on an AVR or something weird like that. You know what? While we're here, let's have a little bit of fun with this. It says, uh, what is it, 371 about is the arbitrary units for the temperature? Let's blast this AVR with some cold stuff. Ah, look at that. Now it's already down to 323. Help! Looks like I uh, can actually read from the AVR and everything else. Wow, this is really strange. I have no idea why I did this.